Alright guys, we're going to start section 1.4. 1.4 discusses angle measure and introduces the concept of angles. Um, so let's jump right in. Before we can understand angles, we need to know what a ray is. Um, a ray is a part of a line that has one endpoint and it extends infinitely in one direction. Alright, not like the band, but it extends in one direction. Rays are named by stating the endpoint first and then any other point on the ray. So if we look at this figure here, it is a, a part of a line that has endpoint A and extends in the direction of B. We always start by naming them by using the endpoint first. All right. Unlike a line or a line segment, it doesn't matter if we put B before A or A before B when we're naming it. This time it actually matters. We need the endpoint first. So in this case, our ray has endpoint at, an endpoint at A and extends in the direction of B. Since our endpoint is at A, we do not, do not, do not put a line, uh, an arrow over top of the A. But since it goes in the direction of B, we put an arrow over top of that one. This tells us that we have a ray that has endpoint A and extends in the direction of B. I will not, will not, will not accept, if I ask you to name this ray, I will not accept that as an answer. No matter how hard you try, I will not accept that as an answer. So now that we know what a ray is, we could know, we could learn what an angle is. An angle is formed by two non-collinear rays that have a common endpoint. The rays are called the sides of the angle, and the common endpoint is called the vertex of that angle. So, a couple of examples here. Let's name all the angles that have a vertex at R. Well, right off the bat, we have angle 1, 2, and 3. You can name, we, it is perfectly fine to name them like that. If you want to name them as angle SRP or angle, if you want to, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you can name them angle SRP, angle uh, PRQ, and angle QRT. That's perfectly fine. All of these are interchangeable. That's fine. I'm not going to make you pick one way or the other. Uh, there's a couple others here. We have angle SRQ. That's perfectly fine. That's an angle that has a vertex at R and sides uh, RS and sides RQ. So we can have angle SRQ. We can also have angle PRT. And we could also have this angle right here, angle SRT. So those are all the angles uh, that have a vertex of R there. Second question says name the sides of angle 1. All right, well, angle 1 is right here. All right, the sides are rays RS and RP. And then what points are on the interior of angle PRT? Interior, think inside the angle. Angle PRT is this angle right here. The only point that lies on the inside here that we know of is point Q. All right, so that's the basics of angles. All right, naming them, naming the sides, finding the points, uh, and so forth. Let's talk about different types of angles here. All right, angles, they're measured in units called degrees. The degree results in dividing the distance around of a circle into 360 parts, hence 360 degrees. If you look at compasses, that's why they're divided into 360 degrees. Um, due north is at 360 degrees or zero degrees. Due east is 90 degrees. Due south is 180 degrees. And due west is 270 degrees. There are four types of angles uh, that we know of. Uh, we have an, an acute angle. That's an angle whose measure ranges between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Uh, a right angle, 
is an angle whose measure is exactly 90 degrees. In a diagram, a small box at the vertex of the angle indicates that that angle is a right angle. And lastly, a straight angle, an obtuse angle, is an angle whose measure ranges between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And a straight angle is an angle whose measure is exactly 180 degrees. A couple more examples here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, angles a little bit further. Uh, given this diagram here, we're just going to assume that if it looks to be, the angle appears to be less than 90 degrees, then it is less than 90 degrees. Or if the angle appears to be between 90 and 180 degrees, then it is. Alright? So first uh, problem here, number four, name an acute angle. If you pick any angle that appears to be less than 90 degrees, you're going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to pick this one right here because it's really simple. Angle TYS. All right. Important to note here, all right, I start with a point on the side, on one side, I then name the vertex, then I name the point on the other side. That's always going to happen that way. The vertex will always be the third, the second point or second letter that you denote in naming an angle, and then the two points on the other side, on the sides, are going to be sort of on the outside in between. You know, one of them is going to be between the angle symbol and the vertex, and the other one's going to be after the vertex. All right, fifth problem, name a right angle. All right, right angles are denoted with a box here, so we'll name it accordingly. Uh, so we know that's 90 degrees, so that's going to be angle YVX, y, or VYX. An obtuse angle. If it appears to be greater than 100, greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, we'll use it. Uh, in this case, let's pick angle UYX. That appears to be to fit that criteria. And then a straight angle. Straight angles. All right, they're angles that measure 180 degrees. Let's pick this one right here, the straight line here, SW. Except it has a vertex at Y, so we'll go angle S. YW. Alright, so that's naming angles. We've talked about angles a little bit before, uh, and now we've identified acute right obtuse and straight angles. Um, if problems in the book ask you to, you know, measure them with a protractor or whatever, uh, I'm going to trust that you guys have uh, been taught how to uh, use a protractor in elementary school, middle school. Um, I, I hope that's something I don't have to review, but if I have to, I'll take the next day. Uh, tomorrow and go over that with you guys if you so choose. Alright, so let's move on. Uh, array that divides an angle into two congruent angles is called an angle bisector. Alright. So, if we have two angles that are congruent, say we have angle 1 and angle 2, say they're congruent. We just denote it that way pretty easy uh, and self-explanatory. All right, uh, let's look at uh, some examples here. In this figure here, ray BA and ray BC are opposite rays. These two are opposite rays. They form a straight angle. Ray BF bisects angle CBE. Let's do these problems here. Well, first off, let's decode what this actually means here. Ray BF bisects angle CBE. All right. If it bisects angle CBE, if ray BF bisects angle CBE, then that tells us that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent. Just like we had hash marks for segments to denote they're congruent, these little marks right here indicate if angles are two angles are congruent within the diagram. So we're going to put those there to help us out here if we need, need it. All right. So let's look at uh, question eight. Um, the measure angle EBF. So this angle right here has a measure of 6x plus 4 degrees. And the measure of angle CBF is 7x minus 2 degrees. All right. Well, we know that these two are congruent because ray BF bisects this angle. So the setup begins. Let me pick a different color here. 
the setup becomes the measure of angle EBF equals the measure of angle CBF. Alright, so we'll substitute in. That's going to be 6x plus 4 equals 7x minus 2. And we'll go ahead and solve this for uh, x. We'll subtract 6x from both sides. Um, the color for that. We'll subtract 6x from both sides. And we'll get x, 4 equals x minus 2. Then we'll add 2 to both sides. And we'll get x to be 6. Well, that's not what the problem asked. The problem didn't ask us to find x. It asked us to find the measure of angle EBF. So what we're going to do here, like we did with segments, we're going to take x equals 6 and substitute it back into um, what we're given to find the measure of angle EBF. So the measure of angle EBF, that's 6x plus 4. Substitute in, that's going to be 6 times 6 plus 4. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 4 is 40, and don't forget the degree symbol. Alright, if you forget the degree symbol, we don't know what you're talking about. We could be talking about degrees, radians, gradients, miles, whatever. Remember, angles are always, for the, this time being, they're always going to be measured in degrees. When you get into trig, pre-calc, and calc, you'll learn that there's a radian measure. Um, when we get to circles, we might explore that in chapter 9, uh, but not for right now. All right. Now, if the question asks to find the measure of angle EBC here, you would just simply find the measure of angle EBF or angle uh, CBF and then double it um, to find the measure of angle CBE. That would be 80 degrees if we were asked to find it. Last example. Suppose the measure of angle 1 uh, and the measure of angle 2 are congruent uh, in the same diagram here, all right? And the measure of angle ABD is 2R plus 5 degrees, and the measure of angle ABE is 100 degrees. We're going to find R in the measure of angle DBE. Well, from the problem, we said we wanted to assume that these two angles are congruent here. So if they're congruent, then that means that BD, ray BD is a bisector. Um, and we know the measure angle ABE is 100 degrees. So the measure angle ABD is one half the measure of angle ABE. And this is how we'll sort of write that. All right. Uh, let me get a pen here. Or we could say twice the measure of angle ABD equals the measure of angle ABE without a problem. Two times the measure of angle ABD equals the measure of angle ABE. So that's going to be two times two times R plus five equals a hundred degrees. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times r plus 5 equals 100. We can divide by 4 right now and get r plus 5 uh, to be 25, and then subtract 5 to give us 20. Now the cool thing about this problem is, um, it's really, really neat how this problem actually is set up. It tells you what the measure of angle uh, AB is, 100 degrees. We assumed angle 1 and angle 2 were congruent. So the measure of angle, D, angle DBE is one half the measure of angle ABE. It's that simple, all right? Don't overcomplicate yourself if you can try not to. Um, so the measure of angle DBE is one half measure of angle ABE a half of a hundred 
is 50 degrees. Now, I'm going to show you an alternate method to finding what R is here at this point. All right, and I'm going to do it right underneath this part right here. Because angle ABD is angle 1 and angle 2 is angle DBE, all right, we can essentially uh, set the measure of angle ABD and the measure of angle DBE uh, equal to each other now that we have the measure of angle DBE. All right, and you're going to see something interesting happen. You're going to see something real interesting happen. All right. The measure of angle ABD is 2 times R plus 5, and the measure of angle DBE from what we found is 50 degrees. If you want to distribute the 2 here, you can do that to get 2R plus 10 equals 50. Subtract 10 from both sides, you get 2R equals 40. Divide by 2, and you get R to be 20. Well, look at what just happened here. You get the same thing in both cases. All right? So, no matter which way you choose, you know, this way, you know, as I was completing it, I said, well, maybe it was easier to find the measure of angle DBE first, you know? You never know that. You never know if one approach might be easier than another. That's that's part of the beauty of math. You know, there could be one easier approach. There might be a, a harder approach. Um, but no matter what, hopefully, you, you know, you come out with the same answer. Um, but I just wanted to show you two different methods to solving the same problem here. Uh, this right here, I think, is way more easier, way more easy than doing all of this work and then working with it again. All right. Again, you know, if you have questions on any of this uh, lesson from today, bring them in tomorrow. We'll go over them, uh, over the problems that you might have. Uh, go over some of the homework problems here um, that are on textbook page 41, numbers 1 through 10. There's 10 of them. Uh, some of them are real easy, like name the vertex, name the sides, uh, and other ones are just similar to uh, some of the later problems with the algebra and find the measure of this angle, find x, solve for x or y, and so, and so forth. All right. Hope you have a great evening. Uh, hopefully these problems, you get them done. We'll check them tomorrow as usual. Bring any questions you might have uh, to school tomorrow, and we'll, we'll address them. We'll go over them uh, for sure, for sure. Thank you. Have a great night.